Well, the narrative is beginning to turn. Uh, just as uh, as I was predicting earlier this week, uh, the uh, the rather uh, I guess you could say liberal administration in Minnesota uh, decided to give room uh, to the uh, to the rioters to destroy some of Minneapolis. They've done that for multiple nights now, and it's created enough fear and uh, and anger amongst the civilian population so much to the degree that in fact I think it was starting to backfire, and and was. Um, you know, making people resent the authorities, not uh, not sort of beg for uh, you know for their help. You know, but now that phase of the strategy is starting to change, and they're moving towards a more aggressive stance uh, and and openly uh, looking to counter uh, the rioters now. As I said, I think the whole letting it burn strategy um, is a, would be effective for the authorities because it would uh, it would add that much more justification uh, to any punitive measures that they took. Essentially, from a PR perspective, they needed to let the city burn to justify, uh, you know, proper law enforcement in this case, and you know, the breaking up of the riots um, because it needed to be well established that these folks are not peaceful protesters. And this is true whether uh, they did this intentionally or unintentionally. I'm saying that even if this was a, um, you know, a, a an administration, um, you know, a police force, a mayor, and a governor who understood from the beginning that these were not peaceful protests, they needed to convince the public of that if they wanted to uh, uh, to save face and not be seen as uh, as tyrants uh, oppressing, you know, a downtrodden community. And so they very clearly did not defend uh, the city. Uh, they let businesses burn. We had, we've seen many videos of business owners um, of all different colors. Although uh, you know, the couple that I've seen, a barbershop owner and a bar owner, um, were both black. You know, very upset, talking about how uh, you know these folks just destroyed everything that they had. You know, they're financially ruined. Uh, their business is destroyed. They're going to have to fire all of their employees. Um, and uh, the police did nothing to protect them. Uh, in fact, the barbershop owner said it took like two and a half hours for the fire department to get there. Well, he was one of the lucky ones because uh, a lot of places the fire department just wouldn't go because, of course, the rioters were attacking the firefighters uh, just like the, the, the cops. And so today, uh, you know, the, uh, the press conference that the government did, uh, they came out and basically are saying, you know, OK, these are riots. There's not peaceful protests. They are saying this is completely removed from the death of George Floyd, which is correct. But it was, you know, it was removed from, his, you know, the death of George Floyd before last night. Certainly, uh, the riots, um, you know, obviously were never about uh, George Floyd. That's just a great opportunity. There's no logical connection between, you know, stealing a TV and uh, and wanting to have, you know, justice. Now, from the beginning, I characterized these riots more as left-wing riots. I wasn't really calling them, you know, like black race riots. It's, it, it doesn't seem to me um, that the character is, is much like what you saw with the L.A. riots back in the 90s or with Ferguson um, it, it's, it's diff or Baltimore. It's different than that because this is a – there's a lot of white people in these mobs, basically, is is what it comes down to, and so uh, and if you look at what they're you know what the, who's being attacked by these uh, by these rioters, it's not like they're just indiscriminately attacking white people because of course there's white people among the rioters, um, and they're not just attacking white-owned businesses or anything like that. They're not just attacking the police. They seem to be attacking uh, all forms of private property, whether they're owned by white folks or black folks or, or whoever else. Um, it seems like these folks really just want to destroy the social order um, you know, of a, of a private property-based society. And so to me, that seems like a, a revolutionary left-wing riot. Pretty plain and simple. Uh, but the authorities in Minnesota <laughs> took the – I have to say I was not expecting this. This came totally out of left field. I would have never thought that they'd come up with this, have decided that these riots are uh, caused by white supremacy. OK, just let that sink in. And they're not saying that, oh, well, there's inherent white supremacy in America, and so these folks, these rioters, are rising up against white supremacy. It's not, it's none of that, um, you know, like intersectional doublespeak that you would get in, on a college campus or something like that, justifying the riots. They're not justifying the riots. They're saying the rioters are bad people, and the rioters need to be stopped and crushed. But they're saying that the rioters themselves 
are white supremacists and that um, everyone they're arresting are from out of state, which I mean, I would believe that, that the rioters might be out of state or from different cities. Um, because, you know, when you hear like something like this is going on, you know, it's a good opportunity if you want to go riot to go into the city and, and join in. But I have to say that, um, you know, the whole white supremacy thing just sounds absurd on the surface. Obviously, we haven't seen their evidence yet. Um, I imagine that the state of Minnesota must have some evidence uh, to justify their saying this. Um, but uh, but they're claiming that this whole the whole rioting situation is some big white supremacist conspiracy um, that a, uh, a some white terror group plotted and went to Minnesota. And is really the ones, you know, pulling the strings uh, here and, and, and causing these riots. Now, what I find very strange is I guess you could argue, um, you know, that it's possible that every one of the white people that you see in these videos uh, smashing windows and stealing TVs, you could say, OK, well, maybe they're white supremacists, even though they're kind of skinny and pale and look like Antifa to me. You know, normally when I think of a white supremacist, I think of some, you know, big brawny Chad with a shaved head. But let's just say that all the folks in these videos who are uh, are white are also white supremacists. Well, <laughs> most of the people involved in these mobs are still black, okay? White people are the minority in there. There are white people there, sure, you know? And I'm happy to point that out, that uh, this doesn't seem to be, you know, an all-black riot. But it's dominantly black, <laughs> And the white folks certainly don't seem to be in charge. I mean, it's a mob. You know, a mob, kind of by definition, doesn't have a leader. Uh, it is, you know, they, it operates based on, you know, the mob mentality. And so I guess to say that, you know, the white supremacists are leading all this is to say that all these black people you see involved in the riots, you know, breaking into stores and burning places down and cheering all this on, um, are somehow being manipulated by white supremacists. I mean, if, if these folks are, are you know just fine peaceful protesters, if you remove the white supremacists, what strategy are the white supremacists using to turn them into violent animals? I mean, this truly is you know one of the most absurd things that I've ever heard. And I, you know they pull out the white supremacist thing a lot. You know the, the mainstream left does. But I mean, I just I was not expecting that in this case. I have no idea how you how you make that case. I've not seen anyone you know, uh, walking out there with swastikas or anything. I mean, this clearly seems to be Antifa's M.O. And President Trump, you know, is is, is smelling the fish here uh, and is, uh, you know, making the same case, saying, you know, like, hey, <laughs> this is clearly Antifa tactics. Uh, these are Antifa folks, um, you know, doing the rioting. This is their sort of shtick. Uh, don't try and blame other folks. So it seems like the folks, the authorities in Minnesota are just trying to cynically uh, racialize this in a very polarizing way um, because they're saying, you know, hey, not only um, are, are these, uh, you know, all of these uprisings uh, not protests, they are in fact riots, um, so they are bad. But don't worry, the black people aren't doing it. It's only the, the, the white right, the white right wingers. So don't worry, the left, you're free and clear. These are bad people, but they're not left-wingers. You know, and I guess I should mention that the Attorney General of the state of Minnesota is Keith Ellison, um, who is, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the far, far left type guys really think of Keith Ellison, but Keith Ellison certainly tries uh, to be uh, certainly on the far left wing of the Democratic Party. So he, I guess he still gets along with the establishment to some extent, so he's not probably full Antifa, but I think he, he kind of, he, you know, he's the type that would wink and a nod at Antifa. Oh, and did I mention that <laughs> the uh, the rioters tried to burn down CNN yesterday? That was hilarious. Um, and don't worry, CNN kept defending them afterwards. Uh, and uh, in, a, in a pretty hilarious, unrelated clip, I think, in Minnesota, you had the CNN reporter on the ground saying, oh, yeah, it's been totally peaceful tonight. No rioting. Nope, no, nowhere in sight. There's been no violence. And then somebody throws a bottle at him and, it you know, gets his shirt all wet and it just you know, bounces off his body and goes, oh, that was a bottle. That happens. So no violence, but they're throwing bottles at CNN. <laughs> kind of a, just a microcosm of, of what happened overall, where CNN's saying, oh, yeah, wonderful, peaceful protesters are freedom fighters. Uh, and then they try to burn down CNN um, <laughs> and uh, graffitiing all these uh, all these sorts of epithets on, the, on their big sign and uh, smashing windows. And um, oh, something I thought funny, a, a bit of graffiti was it said melon in 2020. Like, you know, hey, I don't care about who, who's elected. I just want somebody with some melanin 
uh, to win the presidential election, which I guess is a bad year for you if that's your qualification since uh, you got two old whiteies, uh, Trump and Biden. Yeah, so the, uh, the Minnesota government seems to be living in clown world. I think that they kind of bungled uh, the original strategy that I'd laid out that I thought that they were trying to, um, uh, trying to conduct uh, with respect to you know, letting the rioters uh, delegitimize themselves and then come in and clean up the mess. And then hopefully you know, the idea from, the, from, the, from their perspective would be now people are going to value the police more because they've seen you know, this, uh, this violent anarchy uh, and what it's like when the cops leave. Um, so, but the let it burn strategy, it doesn't seem like they were intending to do that. It seems like they actually thought, hey, if we abandon the city, that these folks will be peaceful, which just isn't the case. And so because this was unintentional, it doesn't seem like they have a great plan uh, to crack down. It seems like that they're just starting that now. And so they may not be successful um, in, uh, in tamping down on the rioting because if their strategy is we're just going to call these folks white supremacists and blame all the damage of the riots on white supremacy when it's very clearly black people rioting, um, <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. And uh, uh, something that will prove to be prophetic, uh, something that, uh, uh, that I th- – you know, always thought was possible, but I didn't think was, you know, was the the course that we we're headed on here. Was a, uh, a a guy who owns a strip center uh, decided to walk in front of the local news uh, camera uh, last night, I believe, in Minneapolis, because uh, it looked pretty bad. As his shopping center was being burned down, and he said, "Hey, <laughs> if the governor and the mayor keep letting this happen, you know, if the police do not protect uh, our city, then what you're going to happen, what you're going to have happen, is that uh, folks." are going to rise up against the rioters. If there are no police to defend the city, people are going to defend it on their own. Because he said, uh, it's not just me that owns this building. You've got all of my tenants you know, who own businesses in this building completely destroyed. You've got all of their employees whose uh, you know, livelihoods, uh, you know, whose jobs are now destroyed. And you multiply that across every um, you know, building in the entire city. You've got a lot of angry people who can start their own, uh, you know, army uh, to defend uh, the city if the police are not going to do it. And that's what's going to happen. And you're going to have violent street uh, clashes between, uh, you know, people with jobs, business owners and landlords, probably uh, all trying to defend uh, their property against uh, these unhinged rioters. And I didn't think that it would come to that because I really thought that this was a well-orchestrated strategy on the part of, of the Minneapolis government. Uh, on the part of the you know the police and, and all these folks, I thought that they were doing this on purpose, that they were letting the city burn. In fact, they weren't. <laughs> At least that's how they're acting. They did not expect this to happen. And so I don't think that they're going to swoop in and save the day now. It looks like uh, things are going to get worse before they get better. And that, uh, you know, I mean, hell, <laughs> the governor came out and said he needs, uh, you know, the people of Minnesota basically to uh, rise up and, uh, and, you know, and show everyone that they're tired of this, that they don't want any more of this to happen. You know, it sounded like he was asking, you know, uh, um, <laughs> you know, gamers to rise up, which, uh, you know, old uh, Mr. Mediocure on Twitter was alluding to. <laughs> He was saying, are you ready, gamers? Because, I mean, the guy literally used the words, rise up. I mean, if you want the people uh, of, your, uh, of your city to rise up against the rioters, that sounds like Boogaloo's step to me. And uh, if this continues across the country uh, to get worse in all these cities, uh, you're going to see that. You know, especially if this starts happening in, in parts of the country where folks are more heavily armed, uh, to where it is more common for uh, in, in people who... Uh, are involved in businesses to own weapons and to want to protect uh, what's theirs. You know, especially if, uh, as I believe, was it the mayor maybe saying that, uh, hey, <laughs> they're going to run out of stuff to burn in the city center here soon, and they're going to start moving out into the suburbs, so you folks need to be ready. If this starts happening in the suburbs, you're going to get your, uh, you know, your lower to upper, your lower to upper middle class folks uh, who own guns uh, to go to these shopping centers to protect their uh, – whatever the grocery stores they have there or their, uh, you know, the jewelry stores uh, to protect, uh, the, you know, the Taco Bells, the Wendy's, which are also being burned for some reason. And that's when you will see violent clashes in the streets between these, you know, lightly armed protesters and uh, a minority of heavily armed counter protesters. And of course, to use the term protester at this point is total mockery. I'm not protesting anything. Uh, you know, like I said, these are animals. And, you know, one thing that I don't think is, you know, totally off base that the that the authorities were saying is that most a lot of these folks are out of state would not surprise me. 
Um, although Minnesota is a pretty big state, so maybe out of out of county, I would believe out of state's a little harder. I mean, how far are you really going to drive to riot? You know, there is kind of a there's a there's a risk reward there that just doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, if it costs you a couple hundred bucks to drive, uh, you know, you need to steal something pretty expensive in the looting uh, to make up for that. Going and grabbing, you know, one uh, 42 inch flat screen. Uh, is not really going to justify uh, a round trip if you're coming from outside the, the state of Minnesota. So anyway, I can't wait to see them try and flesh out this nonsensical claim uh, that white supremacists are organizing the rioting. Uh, it will be very funny to see how they try and pin that when it is you know, demonstrably untrue that this is a white supremacist riot. Um, but I guess the idea is that they're going to try and uh, you know, make some kind of like Russia collusion type of narrative to where they said, okay, sure, even though Trump voters don't don't think that they're Russian agents, by voting for Trump, you know, they were doing what the Russians wanted. And they're probably going to find some Facebook post by Richard Spencer saying how uh, he supports the riots. And then they'll go, ha, see, Richard Spencer is organizing the riots. You know, but we'll see. So uh, in that case, if you've gained anything of value in this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.